This is, I think, a coded message almost. <laughs> this is the cosmic abundance of the elements in the cosmos, right? Now remember that the, the chain of coincidence, the chain of the things you have to have to get atoms is incredible. You've got to have 10 million degrees in the center of stars. You've got to have supernovae to get them out of the star, right? You've got to have a whole lot of conditions correct in the cosmos to get the atoms of life out. These are the main atoms of life, hydrogen, oxygen, carbon, nitrogen, magnesium, which is the metal in chlorophyll, you know, iron is a very important metal, it handles oxygen, it handles oxygen in the body, in your body, in hemoglobin, it carries it around the body. Silicon is one of the major constituents of the Earth's crust, and of course water and CO2 are the two key molecules. All the carbon in the world is built up from carbon dioxide, right, in every mm -hmm. organism. Right? Now just look at this. The commonest atom in your body is hydrogen, the commonest in the cosmos, right? The second commonest reactive atom, Helium is, a, is an inert gas like neon and argon and krypton. Right? The second most reactive atom is oxygen. And it's the second, second most common atom in your body. Right? The third most atom common in your is, is carbon. And it's the third most abundant in the cosmos, right? <laughs> it goes on like this. Nitrogen is the fourth most abundant. Someone Magnesium. supports that as above, this, so below. Well, people say, can I have a message from the gods, you see? It's like a hint. It's a myth. Now, the, but now, not only is it a hint, it's a strong hint. It's a, it's a real strong hint. <laughs> and this is right at the heart of the hardest of science, right? This is not a something esoteric. It's not new age. It's absolutely hard science, right? This is a measurement of the cosmic abundance of the elements of life throughout the cosmos and the fantastic story of how they're made, right? Now, basically, the other thing about it is that, in fact, water, which is the, com which is the matrix of life, and also the 70% of your body is water, H O. CO2, CO. <laughs> there, there as well. The molecules are there as mm -hmm. well. And guess how much water there is in, in our galaxy? 200 million solar masses of water. 200 million solar masses of water in inter interstellar space in our galaxy alone, right? The, the, the cosmos is flooded with the seeds of life. Now, if, if, you, if it was the case that you could make life with all sorts of other atoms, right, it wouldn't be so significant. But these atoms are uniquely fit to fit together. And for, yes, I mean, sir, it's yes, organic sir. chemistry, really, isn't it? It's the carbon atom is an amazing atom because it links with itself and it can forms vast majority of all compounds known to science, known to chemistry, are organic chemicals, right? And so basically, it's not that these compounds are the most common. Not only are they the most common, but they're uniquely endowed to make life as well. You see. So it's not just that life had to use those atoms. Mm -hmm. They're the only atoms it could use, and the commonest in the cosmos. I think. So this is a powerful coded message. And I like to think of it as a, as a reversal of the starry messenger of Galileo. He wrote this famous book. He looked through his telescope, and I mean, earlier in the talk we're talking about the collapse of the old teleological vitalist view, you see. So, I mean, this is, but then he looked, he looked into the sky and he saw the universe seem to extend forever. Each time he built a more powerful telescope, he could see further and further into the cosmos. He saw that, in fact, Jupiter was a little solar system, like the sun's system. And he, he, he immediately started to suggest, of course, in, in, in the starry messenger, the messenger that came from the skies was that humans had no central place in nature. Well, the message that comes from 20th century cosmology and physics is that life has a very central place in nature, you see. Mm -hmm. And the Murchison meteor, which hit that Australian town in 1969, which is the, one of the most important sidereal messengers of the 20th century, as well as this, brought carbon, the nitrogenous bases of DNA, to the Earth from space. And it was the first one that people got clean, right? You know, there's no contamination on it, right? Mm -hmm. And what the Murchison Meteor said is, throughout the universe are all the building blocks of life. Not just the atoms of life, but the basic compounds as well, they're out there as well. So this was a message. So that Galileo's pessimism and nihilism, that there was no purpose in the world related to life or man, was now reversed beautifully by the discoveries of Hoyle and his colleagues, all, and, and basically, you know, 20th century physics.